Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the tropics once again, where we have our first tropical disturbance, which we've already talked about once before. It actually looks like it could be a little bit more major than originally anticipated. We also have a second disturbance, which might even be more major than the first one. So we have a lot to talk about. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below below. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what are your predictions for the second disturbance? Let me know in the comments down below, and also give me a reason why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at the satellite imagery. Our first disturbance there is just south of Cuba. You can see some uh, whiter clouds in the middle of those black and red shades. Uh, that's our disturbance right there. It's going to generally head very, very slowly to the north and to the west, and it's going to either hit the Yucatan Peninsula there or go in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. Obviously, if it hits the Yucatan Peninsula, it could bring some minor impacts. It doesn't look to be a strong storm by that point, so that would be the more minor impact type situation. It could still cross over and develop in the Gulf, but it would be much more likely to develop into a stronger storm if it doesn't hit the Yucatan Peninsula and it stays over water and goes in between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula and still goes into the Gulf, we would see a much stronger storm in that situation. Now, our second disturbance there is just to the east of the Lesser Antilles. So we're going to watch that one closely. It's going to be heading generally westward towards the same area where our first disturbance is. And it also looks to take about the same track as it heads northwestward from that point as well. Anyways, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the National Hurricane Center's two-day and five-day predictions for both of these systems. Then we're going to start getting into some model guidance like the European model, our GFS model, our Canadian model, and just run down what they're all calling for. Also, we're going to have our own direct weather forecast at the very end of this video for both individual storms. So first things first, we're taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook here from the National Hurricane Center. And as you can see, uh, for now, we have a 30% chance within the next 48 hours for our first dis disturbance there south of Jamaica there, as you can see. Uh, and then our second disturbance there that is east of the Lesser Antilles has a 0% chance. And what the 0% chance means is that it must have a higher percent chance in the five-day outlook, which we will take a look at in a second, because if it had zero on both, they wouldn't even show it, obviously. So uh, whenever you see a zero on the two-day outlook, it always means that, well, pay attention to the five-day because there will be a higher percentage. All right. Now, here we are taking a look at disturbance number one for the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, uh, we have a 70% chance now for this one to develop. And as you can see, they have a very wide range of where this one can develop. It could go into Central America, which would be the least impactful, like I said, or if it hits the Yucatan Peninsula, because that land interaction is going to break it up and it wouldn't have time to develop into a very strong storm. So it'd most likely be a very minor storm for the folks that live in those regions. However, if it does decide to go further north and in between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, that would be the much more impactful route because it would have a lot of time to develop and then it would also have more time to develop once it enters the Gulf and then would pose an eventual threat to the United States. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at disturbance number two in this same fashion. All right, and as you can see here, we're taking a look at disturbance number two. Remember, it had a 0% chance of development over the next two days, but once we take a look at the five-day outlook, it's going to potentially be heading towards the same areas where disturbance number one is currently at, and it has a 20% chance for now. Remember, all of these systems always start out with a lower percentage. We saw that our first disturbance had, I think, maybe a 20 or 30% chance when we looked at it a few days ago. Now it has a 70. This one has an equal chance to end up being a 40, 50, 60, 70% chance, just like that first disturbance. So it's just going to take time for us to figure out if it's ever going to be a threat or if it's just going to dissipate before it even begins to develop. Uh, that's all of the things that we need to figure out moving forward. All right. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that shear real quick because I wanted to show you guys that there is some moderate shear that is located in those regions where we're currently seeing these storms, but really uh, nothing too impactful. Disturbance number one isn't going to have too much shear interaction for now. Disturbance number two is going to be adding into those orange regions, so we might see some 
Shear try to eat up a little bit at that storm. Uh, but overall, not going to be too big of a problem. It's once you head into the Gulf, that's where we might see the Shear save us because there is a lot of Shear right now in those red regions. And that would be enough to really weaken a storm before it could hit the United States. That's if the Shear is still in place by the time these storms are heading in, which is kind of a toss-up. Uh, don't really know at this point whether there's going to be a trough or a ridge by that point. That would really determine whether we're going to see the high shear in place by time they're heading into the Gulf. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're just going to move on and we're going to take a look at some modeled guidance. We're going to take a look at those low pressure locations on all three of our ensemble models. So that's something we did a couple days ago. If you enjoyed that segment, we're going to be doing that once more right here. And then we're going to get into our official direct weather forecast for both of these systems afterwards. All right, now first things first, we're taking a look at our European ensemble model here. The thing to remember is this isn't individual systems. This is just individual models uh, with the same system. So here's for the first system. We only have two members. I think we have 30 members on this model, if not 50. So only seeing two is kind of telling me that it's a little bit lower confidence. And this is the minimum low pressure we're seeing on any of these. So we see one north of the Yucatan Peninsula as a 998 millibar low pressure system, which is really a weaker storm. And then one near Florida as a weaker storm as well as an at a 996 millibar low pressure system. So really they expect a weaker storm could pose a threat though uh, to some of the United States. With the second system, however, we see multiple members hop on board for this storm to develop. As you can see, this is by October 11th. This is when that second system would be heading in to the Gulf. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, and some of them we see one as a 977 millibar low pressure system, very, very strong there. And then we see a 987, which is quite strong as well there. So we have two stronger systems. Uh, overall, this model is much more confident in that second system than it is with the first one. And really, the second system is further out, so that's kind of odd. Now, here's our GFS model for the first system. It does have one showing us uh, as a 999 millibar low pressure system there offshore of Florida. Florida seems to have the biggest threat with the first one for some reason. And then we see with the second system, this one has it heading in by the 9th, uh, we see three separate models on board, one with a very strong storm at a 985 millibar low pressure system heading towards the Gulf states. We see one that has just hit Florida at a 994. Again, that would be a weaker storm. And then we have a 997 there just offshore of the Yucatan Peninsula's uh, west coast there. So we have multiple members on board for that second system as well. And I think it's safe to say our GEFS model here is also more confident in the second system as well. All right, now let's take a look at our CMC ensemble model. This is the worst of the three. This one isn't even regularly used. I'm just showing it just because all things are possible, obviously. So take this one with a grain of salt. Our European model is the best. The GFS is the second best. Uh, and this one regularly comes in third place, if not last place, even if you throw in another model that I'm not even including here. So this model is not very good for tropical systems whatsoever. Uh, snowstorms, it can be quite good, but not for tropical systems. All right, so here we are taking a look at this one. And as you can see, by Octo October 4th, which is gonna be in three days, we see one at a 995 millibar low pressure system heading straight into the Gulf. Uh, and then we see the one behind it actually, that's actually a separate system that is not just a separate model for the same system. That's our second disturbance already at a 998 underneath Cuba there. Uh, and by the time we have the 8th of October, so you notice they've been getting earlier and earlier with the arrival of the second system. The European model says it won't be here till the 11th in the Gulf if it does enter the Gulf. The GFS says the 9th and then the CMC says the 8th. So they're getting earlier and earlier. That means the timing could be really thrown off and we don't know exactly when this one will hit at this point. We see one at a 986 millibar low pressure center over Florida, which would be a strong storm hitting Florida. And then we see a weaker system just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula there. Uh, so these two separate members here have differing opinions. Uh, now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to move on and we're going to take a look at our direct weather forecast for this, both of these individual storms. All right, now here we are for the first disturbance in you might notice that this really looks very short. Usually my cones go much further out than that. You might be wondering, why is it so short? That's because of how slow this system really is moving. Uh, it would be just entering the Gulf most likely in about uh, three to five days. So I'm really not extending that cone too far into the Gulf whatsoever. Uh, although that does seem like 
it's very possible that this one will eventually head into the Gulf and pose a potential threat to the Gulf Coast of the United States. Uh, for now, we really need to figure out if it's going to hit the Yucatan Peninsula or if it's going to go through that sweet spot in between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. Either way, it's a very slow mover and it's going to have an easy time developing if it can go through that sweet spot because it has so much time over these warm waters. All right. For our second disturbance, you can see it's moving much faster. In about five days, it'll likely be uh, underneath Jamaica, underneath Cuba, somewhere in there. Uh, and you can see it's going to generally follow the same path as that first disturbance. It's going to head to that region. And then we will also need to have the same discussion with this one. Is it going to hit the Yucatan Peninsula or is it going to go through that sweet spot? So very much so, these could be called twin storms. They're very similar. Uh, this one is just having a very different foundation, I guess. It's having a very different track to get where it needs to go. Uh, but once it gets where that first disturbance is, they're going to have a very similar uh, situation, both of the storms individually. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys to rank how you think September went for your area. And what's so funny said, Cincinnati, cold and dry, 9 out of 10. And I know a lot of people in the Northeast had a very hot September last year. So I know you probably enjoyed the quite cold September that we've had so far this year. Well, it's over now. So yes, the very cold September that we've had this year compared to last year. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Madbirds, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, and Mark J, alongside our two platinum patrons. I'm sorry, Larry LaPan, I kept calling you a diamond patron, although I just uh, went through all of my patrons and figured out, actually, you're a platinum patron, so I apologize for the confusion there, but Larry LaPan, our platinum patron, as well as our other platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Always stay tuned to the National Hurricane for official guidance on these storms. Thank you for watching. Be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.